So what do we want? What do we want? It? And if we don't get it, if we don't get it, if we don't get it, when it three days now, they're paid like the least. Like even some other companies, like they pay more. They're just striking for what they think, like for what's right. For like, yeah. They're striking for what's right. And you know, I'm a nurse and we're just striking in solidarity with them. Because they've been on strike for 63 days. The pharmacists literally were about to go on strike this Monday. But Kaiser settled with them. So like, why can't they just settle with the engineers? Naomi Johnson. One of them is systemic racism, is that black, indigenous, and people of color therapists are, are asked to take on disproportionate work. And so we're losing a lot of those therapists. Um, That's illegal though, isn't it? It should be, but I think they're covering it up and so they're making it seem like it's not, you know, it's not actually happening and that, you know, they're, they're making it seem like we're all actually holding equal labor. It's also that patients are waiting a long time between when they're seen by an intake provider and then we're they're actually seen by their therapist. And then once they're seen by their therapist, their return appointment tends to be like anywhere from four to six weeks after that. And so when people are in crisis and people are traumatized, which is the majority of our patients, especially right now, um, that's not good care. I mean, systemic racism, I mean, how does that affect the patients? Because many of the patients are black, brown people. I mean, it, it seems that that's the clientele. Yeah, yeah, it's absolutely the clientele. And there are also people who are less likely to advocate for themselves and actually be heard when they're advocating for themselves so that they get kind of crushed. They get lost in the system. Sometimes they don't get follow-up. Um, their therapist isn't able to reach out to them because we don't have time. You know, we don't have time in our schedules when it's back to back to back to back sessions. Um, and so they don't get the care they need. They get maybe one or two sessions and then they disappear. Um, and they're not people who will call back because they don't have the bandwidth. I mean, they're, they're depressed, they're traumatized, so it's not like they'll come back again once they have a bad experience. It's kind of done after that. So some people have committed suicide waiting for appointments. Yeah, that happens. That does. That could happen. And Kaiser's response to that is put them in a group, right? But what happens is group is great. I love group. But when you don't have a point therapist, when you don't have an individual therapist to be checking on you, your your group facilitator is not going to be able to check on you one on one. So we can't necessarily assess for risk. We can't say are you actually suicidal or experiencing anything like that. Um, so yeah, I mean, it, it does happen where patients might be impacted in that way. Well, they have a black CEO of Kaiser. They have black managers of Kaiser. You're saying despite that, there's still systemic racism? Yes, and I, I what I've seen in my clinic is that actually black um, people don't want to be manager positions because then they'll have to take on that extra labor and it's not worth it if you're already doing it. And a lot of our managers, I mean, in Richmond are great people. They're doing great work, but they're being crushed by the people above them. So it's not that they're not great, it's just they don't have a lot of power themselves and so they have to pick on extra labor too. And you know, Kaiser says they're for not-profit, non-profit, uh, they've got billions of dollars, 14 billion dollars in surplus, they made billions because of the pandemic. What do you think about healthcare in California nationally that these companies are making billions and yet you're out here today because you the engineers and other workers are not getting proper treatment? Right. Well, Oh, I heard a statistic the other day saying if Kaiser was a state, they would be the seventh wealthiest state in our country. That's incredible. And so to think that we don't, of course we have the resources, one, to pay the engineers more, because they're, Kaiser will try to tell you the therapists are out here to make more money. We're not out here to make more money. We're out here to get our patients the care that they need. And we're out here to support our mental health, because the work that we're doing is not sustainable for us. And, and so they should be ashamed that they have so much much resources and yet they're trying to gaslight us and say that they don't you know that, that they're doing the best that they can that they're getting we're getting paid better than anyone else that's not the issue the issue is that we don't have the resources to be able to do the work that we were trained to be able to do we know how to do mental health care we know how to provide the services it's just that we need to be given the space and the, and the bandwidth to be able to do so you think that the health care in California in this country should be privately run absolutely not <laughs> That's a no-brainer, absolutely not. <laughs>
<laughs> because I mean, it seems like although they say they're not profits, they're making profits, yeah. and they're not going to the workers who do the work. Exactly. Or, or just like the patients aren't able to. They're paying their premiums, and the premiums are going to people paychecks who never have any um, actual access to patients. They don't actually work with patients one to one. They're people who are up there in that building, who are in their offices and are not actually interacting with patients on a day-to-day -day basis. So they don't actually know what the issue is. They don't actually see it. It seems like the state, Governor Newsom, is not really holding these companies accountable. I mean, they've been in here. They Are they regulating? Are they enforcing the laws which say that, for example, mental health treatment? I, like it. I mean, I think that a corporation like Kaiser, they have whole departments to be able to um, say that they're, to, you know, the PR departments to be able to say, we're doing so much and look, we're doing this, and they twist everything. So I think that things, motions like this, where we come out and we strike and we actually show people what's actually going on are important because I think that, you know, a lot of people don't know. A lot of our patients even, they hear in the news like, oh, you guys are just striking because you want more money, or, you know, they, they have, there's so much misrepresentation, and they're able to put more in the media than we are. So this is so important to be able to communicate, like, no, 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 don't, don't believe the smoke and mirrors that they're throwing out there. There's a lot going wrong. They we're in crisis. I mean, it's it's not like a, a little thing. We are absolutely in crisis in the way that we we don't provide. We fail to provide adequate mental health care. And this is the NUHW is out here. Why aren't the unions and NNU, the other unions all together? It sounds very strange, you know. That's such a good point. I wish they were out here. I think that we unfortunately don't have as much collaboration as we should. And I think also people are burnt out from the pandemic. And so there's some people who just are like, I, to think about organizing, and that feels like a lot, you know. That's why the companies like this end up winning is because we try to organize, but a lot gets lost when we're just swamped already to be thinking about another action, to be thinking about losing out on our paychecks and all of that. So it would be great. It would be great to have the pharmacists out here. It would be great to have more of the nurses out here. It would be great to have doctors out here, imagine. Um, but, you know, then we have to also think about the patients in that moment who who will lose out and is it worth it if we're gonna you know if we might not actually get what we're fighting for I'm Lynn McKenna I'm from NUHW and the NUHW union that represents thousands of psychotherapists we are here saying that we need a contract the con that Kaiser has not signed has not been equitable about and we are here with our brothers and sisters from the engineering union who have been out for two months, who make COVID air safe, who run the lights in the emergency room and in the operating room. They don't have a contract. Kaiser, you, are, you have billions in profits. Your executives make millions and your CEO makes tens of millions. You could do different. You could do better. And we're asking you to do better. For us as therapists who are giving our love and our life to our patients, because we care about them as you know my colleagues here are here to say um, that's why we're here that is why we are here Kaiser listen you can do this you can be fair to us and we're here for the patients your administrators we're here to hold the hands of our patients, to listen to their woes, to help them with their anxiety, their depression, schizophrenia. Um, and the pandemic has, has really exacerbated all that, I mean, including among your employees. What, what effect has that on Yes, absolutely. Um, for those who have, who have lost contact with others because of the pandemic, we're a contact for them as we work with them over their anxiety, their trauma. Oh, I have a patient who is a long hauler with COVID. 
she can't appear at things, but we can be together and I can support her and let her know she's loved, she's important. Kaiser, take care of us and as we are taking care of others and you can do this. They've been fined millions of dollars for not having proper treatment in a timely way. Uh, what's, the, what's that all about? I mean, it's the law, it's federal law and state law. Why, aren't they, why are they ignoring the law? I think they can afford to. They'd rather pay the penalty than staff us properly. You know, um, they don't have enough clinicians to see patients in a timely way. Most mental health circumstances de demand being seen more than once a month, once every five or six weeks. And we are ready to offer that, but we need the hours to do that. And what that means is that we need more staff so that we can provide that. Um, Kaiser can afford to do this. And as you said, it's the law, parity, mental health is health. And we need to take care of those health issues. People die from these issues and we want to prevent that. You know what? I love the Kaiser claim to the advertising word thrive. We want our patients to thrive and it depends on mental health. It really does. So we need to serve them better than we are um, more often than we can. Where's Governor Newsom? Why aren't they enforcing the laws going after these companies when somebody commits suicide because they don't get proper care and it's required under the law? Why aren't they criminally prosecuting these executives? Isn't that, isn't that criminal negligence? It is, and Kaiser has been fined as you have brought... I'm talking about putting in jail. Oh. It's hard to fit a corporation in jail. You know? Are they above the law? Yeah. And we need them not to be above the law. And they can do that through reach, through Kaiser staffing us. And we'll be there. We'll be there on the lines to help people. First of all, I haven't heard it said today, but it doesn't need to necessarily be said, but I want to say it. Thank you. All Last year, at the beginning of this pandemic, with the amount of people that have been flooding into the hospital, not knowing who was actually sick with just the common cold or who caught this unknown virus, every day you showed up for multiple patients and put yourselves on the line. Not just yourselves, but your families and loved ones. And not only that, putting yourselves on the line every day and also being forced to isolate and shelter in place without truly having an outlet to deal with the mental health impact and stress that that has. So thank you so much. As a community organizer, I actively have to go out there and see what people's issues and concerns are. And some of the stories that I come across, it's hard for me. I wear it on my chest. Sometimes I can't sleep because I'm thinking about, damn. Somebody just lost their job and their landlord wants to kick them out right now and make them homeless. And they're asking me for help. And I try to find out help, but I always know it's not guaranteed, but you do what you can when you can. I can only imagine what it's like for the clinicians to see how people's health are being impacted by the pandemic for therapists who had an uptick in service calls. shoulder on behalf of patients so we're able to live our lives healthily and effectively is a heavy burden and you do deserve fair compensation for that. Without the work of all of you and without the work and dedication of patients showing up, Kaiser wouldn't have no profits. And if Kaiser was smart, they would listen to y'all because if you don't get it, shut it down. If you don't get it, because if you shut this down, they have nothing to gain from that. You deserve more of a workforce. You deserve an increase in wages and better protection so you can provide extra services to patients. Quick story about me and just kind of my small impact of being the Kaiser patient is uh, I told my companion for her birthday that I'll go out and get therapy because like I said, I hold on to a lot of stress. <laughs> and it's not always pleasant to be around me, though I try not to take it out on anybody else. It's like watching the volcano going off and saying, I hope the lava doesn't hit me. <laughs> 
so I did make a call. Okay, well, we'll see you in three weeks to do your intake. All right, I waited three weeks. So, how was your past two weeks? Well, let me answer your 30 uh, quiz questionnaire. Oh, well, I see you suffer from anger issues, extreme amounts of anxiety, and you might be depressed. Really? That's why I called. So, we'll get you on the phone with somebody in four weeks. Cool. I talked to him in four weeks, you know, virtual. We ended up just talking on the phone because that was easier. Uh, he, you know, was great. But then when I found out is that he didn't actually go to Richmond. I thought I was talking to somebody who worked in Richmond. No, we're overstaffed, so they're actually transferring people to Oakland. And by the way, I'm going on vacation. I'll be gone for five weeks. Will you be cool? By the way, you can do our group therapy. I can't tell you how many times group therapy was pushed onto me. And I'm like, granted, I have nothing against group therapy, but I'm also a public official, and there are people who like me for the decisions I make, and there are people who don't. I think I need some one-on-one -on -one attention. And that five-week period came, and I didn't get a call back. I didn't get a call back because you are overwhelmed with the amount of service calls and you need more staffing and people power to adequately provide the services and care that patients deserve. So I stand with you. Don't give up until you get your contract. Hold them accountable because if they don't give you what you deserve or what the patients deserve, they're only exploiting you for your labor and they're exploiting us for our ailments. And that is not okay. Claudia, new HW uh, union backing up the engineers and also for our patients. And what's happening with your patients? There have been some complaints that they're not being getting the treatment that they need. Uh, they don't get them in a timely, timely manner. Sometimes, most of the time, yeah. Is that legal? Not to me, no. Especially not ethically, not clinically legal or ethical. So some patients, I understand, have committed suicide. I'm not sure specifically, but um, there is that, you know, high risk. Mm -hmm. and also, Kaiser's taken a hard line against your union. What have they? Yeah, they've kind of put mental health off a little bit. They put it as not one of the most important items. And not... They're making a lot of profit. Yes, they're making lots and lots. They of... want more, I guess. Yes, yes. We have, we're inundated with need and not enough resources. And they're coming up with, you know, like band-aids, temporary band-aids that aren't really working out. Kind of to, you know, kind of like hot potato the, client, the patients off the responsibility off to somebody else. And these patients, when they have mental health problems, I mean, they're desperate, some of them. I mean, to get care. I mean, what, is it, what does it feel for you as a healthcare worker when you're not able to provide that care? It's very, it's, it's very, it's hard for me personally as a clinician to, I've gotten into this field to help people to get them services that they need and to feel in the position to be in the middleman, to be unable to tell them we can get you the help that you need, even though Kaiser's profiting so much off of everything, you know, especially with the pandemic. And because of the pandemic also, we have such high needs that there should be more investment in mental health. And what has the pandemic done to health care, mental health care? I'm um, sorry, can you say that? Well, what is the pandemic? How has it affected mental health care, mental, mental state of your patients? Well, I'm a child therapist, and so I receive in, in so many more uh, children who are suicidal, um, just really desperate, lots of, you know, anxiety, panic attacks, you know, very, a lot of psychosomatic symptoms like vomiting and um, before school every day and things like that. Um, so it's been really, really hard for them. So they don't have social skills anymore. So they're really isolated. They don't want to go out, you know. So it's, it's really, really worrisome. It sounds like a frightening situation. It is, yeah. And p families are having to move to other places 
places because they lost jobs because of COVID, so they go live somewhere farther and the kids they have to change schools and they don't have their so social support, so it's even harder for them. But those kids are just making all this profit. What, they're making all this profit. Why are they, they made a lot of money because of the pandemic. Yeah. People not coming in for physical appointments. Where's the money going? Yeah, I have no idea where it's going. You know, it's, it's, not, it's not okay that so many of the um, unions are going on strike, you know, this week because they're not you know, coming to the table and bargaining at all with us. Oh, I'm Paul. Um, I'm, I'm retired now almost 10 years. I worked 34 years in the buildings and the hotels. The engineers are taking a beating. And it's uh, probably because if Kaiser gives them a decent contract, which they're not offering them anything, it's if they give them a decent contract, it would have repercussions for the other unions that are coming up. And they, they really, uh, it was unfortunate that the engineers ended up uh, being the first to go out because they may be out a long time because Kaiser just isn't budging and what they've been offered is just so garbage. I feel real sympathy for them. It's nothing like I ever remember. It never happened before. You, know, you and I know the guys who were apprentices with us who worked at Kaiser say they were apprentices in the late 70s. They went the whole life and retired now and they never had a trouble like this. I mean it's really they Kaiser was considered a prime place to work, a good place to work. And it, it, uh, it's going to do this is horrible. We had friends who went into Kaiser and worked for Kaiser and uh, as engineers um, and it was an, they, they had to go through a rigmarole to get a job. Kaiser was really proud of their engineering staff and they are good engineers. They just are getting them because they don't want to give them anything that they may have to give the other groups. That's all it is. I don't think this is more traditional craft union negotiation. They just don't want to give one craft something and then be and, and, and forced to give it to the nurses who are another craft union. Um, What's your name? Oh, I'm Sharifa Freightman. Um, I work in uh, Kaiser and Fremont. And uh, it's a, for us in um, our unit, it's a solidarity strike with the uh, engineers, but I'm in mental health. I don't know all of the sort of ins and outs of it, but I think that, uh, as I understand, their profits have been pretty steady, so I think that they uh, might not be so uh, genuine about that talking point. So I think they could do a lot better in terms of patient care, especially on the mental health side. How are you being affected, your patients? Uh, the access to care is really limited, uh, very far uh, to get a first appointment or a follow-up appointment, especially in psychiatry. I refer to psychiatry often, and it's very hard to, for people to be seen, and it's not really a ethical in terms of care. Is that a life and death question sometimes? We, in the case of people who have more severe um, mental health uh, conditions or symptoms, and then also, you know, the wait time probably puts a lot of stress on people, so it's difficult. Well, they've been fined in the past millions of dollars because they're not providing proper care. Why isn't the state coming down on them to force them to take care of the issue? Um, my understanding is there is recent um, uh, legislation passed that will put a little bit more teeth into making that happen. So hopefully there'll be um, something coming out of that. Marianne. Barbinder. Oh, we're here for safe staffing and also to sympathize with the engineers who's been here for uh, strike for 63 days. Or it will happen, same thing happen, will happen to us. Mm -hmm. So we are fighting for the, the you know, more staff so we can give a safe care to the patients, which we, we are lack of them. So we want uh, Kaiser to know that, you know. And in the middle of the pandemic? Well, we were people coming from home, living, you know, separate in the hotels, away from the families, taking care of the patients. They, they don't appreciate it. They didn't appreciate it. They need to appreciate the, their employees. They're making money for the employee, from the employee, you know, employee who working. If we are not there, they will not make no money. And they're not getting the right uh, care for them. They have to wait for uh, the staff to attend to them because uh, we don't have enough staff in the hospital. Sharon, uh, to support the engineers and the uh, health care, the mental health care people at Kaiser. Are you a Kaiser? member? I am. So as a Kaiser member, how do you feel that these workers are basically been out in strike for a long time? They don't have proper mental health care? It's deplorable. 
affordable, you know. I mean, we pay plenty in uh, premium, so I think these people should get a fair contract. And why is Kaiser doing this? They say they're a non-profit? Well, you should ask their administrators. Like Napa. I, mean, I don't know. Like a I think they make. I think they make plenty of profit.